Have you guys heard of the free Comic Maker Starter Kit? Well, I'm going to tell you what it is, what's in it, and all the cool stuff you can do with it. <laughs> Greetings, people of the internet. I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. Welcome, mad creators, to the underground laboratory where we create robots, alien zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. And we usually do that in comic book form. I love making comics. I know you guys like making comics. So I came up with a system to help both professional and aspiring comic book creators kind of just make it easier for you guys. It is the Comic Maker Starter Kit. I've talked a lot about it on this channel, but if you're new to this channel, if you're just checking it out for the first time, or maybe you've watched and you've heard about it, but you haven't yet downloaded it, by the way, it is free. I know they say nothing in life is free, but this is this is free. It doesn't cost you a dime, and it's just packed with tons of cool stuff. And uh, But rather than talk about it, I want to give you a little tour. So let's get into it. Let me show. Let me open the pack up and show you all the amazing stuff that you can do with it. All right, so this is a tour of the Comic Maker Starter Kit. What's in it, how to use it, let's dive in. So right now I'm in Adobe Photoshop, um, but you can use these resources in some other programs as well. Um, right now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna open up a file, I'm gonna go to the Comic Maker Starter Kit, and as you can see, I've got, there's uh, balloons and captions, brushes, creator, or sorry, character design templates, fonts, half tones, page templates, script, uh, sound effects, speed lines, storytelling tools and instructions and stuff. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go into page templates and as you can see I've got different formats. There's AICC which is Adobe Illustrator Creative Cloud and then all the way back to Adobe Illustrator CS6. Um, if you have an older version of Illustrator we've got PDF files, PNG files and PSD files. Now because I'm in Photoshop I would probably naturally go to the PSD file but I want to show you that you know probably the most versatile format is going to be your PNG, your transparent PNG. So I'm going to open that up. Um, in here we've got American Standard template, a manga template and a thumbnail template. I'm going to open the thumbnail template and we're just going to do some quick thumbnailing here. Um, now as you can see it's a transparent PNG so it's a little hard to tell so depending on what program you open it in if you're in Clip Studio or whatever you can go in and you can kind of add a background to it so I'm going to add another layer and I'm going to bring that to the bottom I'm going to make that white and then I'll add one more layer that I can draw on here okay um, let's zoom in just a little. We probably don't want to zoom in too much because you don't want to get too much details when you're doing thumbnails. But let's go to our brushes, which I've already installed. So they're in here. There's a little folder here, CircWorks brushes. We're going to open that up. And as you can see, we've got a sable brush, uh, dry brush, crow quill, and a pencil. So I'm going to use the hard lead pencil here. I'm going to select that. And... I'm gonna, even though this is a pencil, I'm gonna use the brush. I just like the way that, that tool works a little better. So I am gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna start laying out a panel. So this will be an establishing shot. Um, I guess I can zoom in a little more. I don't wanna zoom in too much. But the other thing you can do is when you're penciling, if you want to, um, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, let me go back to the pencil. You can kind of play around with your opacity there if you want it a little lighter. Um, so let's just do an establishing shot. So I'm going to have sort of we're out in the ocean. Maybe there's a, an island or a little inlet here. Um, here's another maybe a rock here and then part, part of this uh, another island over here. Um, and maybe we've got like a sort of a shipwreck going on here. Like maybe this can be part of the sail that's been you know, I'll we'll put some just debris and things. Again, this is a thumbnail, so I'm not too worried about that. But maybe up here, we've got a little rock here. Maybe we'll have a guy who's kind of, he's kind of up here on this, uh, on this rock, kind of grasping like he just washed up ashore here. And then maybe put some danger over here. Maybe we'll get some sharks or something and then clouds or whatever all right so we've got our little establishing shot but I just want to kind of show you how how the pencils work um, we can get in a little you know if we want we'll do a close-up I don't want to do a whole lot of drawing here but um, let's see here's the here's the guy here um, maybe, you know, 
obviously hair, some hair in his face. He's kind of washed ashore. Maybe his mouth's open. Maybe he's kind of coughing up some water that he. Swallowed, and then the idea that he's kind of holding on to this rock, whatever. So anyway, so so that's sort of the pencils. Uh, now I want to show you how, how some of the ink brushes work. So we're going to open up a different file here. Okay, still in Photoshop. This time I am going to open a Photoshop file. We're going to go to the Comic Maker Starter Kit. We're going to go to Page Templates, and we're going to go down to. PSDs and I am going to choose the American Standard template. All right, and as you can see, it's got a page, it's all pre ruled, it's got all the space for all your information. And I've already started to set this up. So I've got a border here, and then I've got some pencils that I've done, and I've got a layer to draw on. So let's click on that now. And now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to change the brush. Okay, all right. Nope, not that. So we're gonna go with the sable brush. And we selected black. And as you can see, we'll go ahead and just start inking this character. All the brushes, of course, are pressure sensitive, assuming that you're using a program that has that feature. Um, but let me kind of show you. Let's go and we'll kind of check out some of the Kind of hatch, hatch marks here. Okay. I can do that here, but so yeah. So these are some of the inking brushes. I'll show you kind of what else is in here. Uh, there's a sable brush. We've got. We've also have uh, like a dry brush. It's a little more rough around the edges. Um, I've got like a tech pen that's a little more straight. Of course, we can. This is probably better for like ruling out your pages. Oops. Let me. There we go. <laughs> But yeah, so there's uh, there's ten different brushes in here. There's like some charcoal brushes. Let's try that. So you can see that what the charcoal brush looks like. It's a little rougher. So if you want a real rough look, you can use that. But yeah, so those are some of the brushes. You know, I think we might be getting ahead of ourselves because we're already penciling and inking, but before that, we've kind of got to come up with our story. So I do have some storytelling tools. Uh, in fact, there is a folder in this starter kit called Storytelling Tools. So right now, I'm going to open, uh, I think we're going to open the PDF version. This one, there's a file called Story Structure. So right now, it's just a, a template. You can lay out your what your characters are, the you know the what the outcome you want for the story, the problem, the action, the setting, all that kind of stuff. You can do that. And then I also have a mind map open that file here. So if you're not familiar with what a mind map is, it's a way of uh, taking non-linear notes. Let's see, where is the, there we go. So, all right. So as you can see, we kind of start from the center and we branch out. So I've got my main topic and then my support, supporting ideas. Um, and then examples of those ideas and then they go into more detail. But this is just a really cool way of sort of getting your ideas out and, and trying to flesh them out and everything. So in addition to that, we're going to go, uh, I do have a script template. So once we've got our basic ideas down, uh, we'll go into the script template and there's a couple different formats. There's a word format and then also an open office format. And I, I think they'll open in most word processing programs, but, but so there's a number, no, there's a number of different ways you can lay out a script. This is one way. Um, and I've got examples here. Um, you know, basically the panels, the number of panels, which panels they're at, 
that are in the story, the description, and then the caption and dialogue and everything. So you can go in and you can just start filling these out. It's it's set up for like a 22 page story, but you can extend that or whatever, or customize it to your own particular story. So we've got our script hammered out. We know who our characters are gonna be, but maybe we don't know like the what visually we want them to look like. Well, that's all right because I have included some character design templates. So let's go ahead. Um, I am in Photoshop right now again. Um, go back here and we'll go to the character design templates. And I'm going to open the PSD version. Now, here's a female one. And then let me open another one. We have also have a male template here. And this is just a good way to do turnarounds if you want to design your character. So. Let's uh, let's do this. Let me create another layer on top of here, and uh, get a brush here, or maybe a yeah, okay. And uh, yeah, let's just start coming up with a, a kind of a quick character design. Oops, that is way too big. All right, so we'll just start sketching out. Maybe this guy's has sort of a hood. Right? Or maybe it, you know, maybe it kind of flares out here like a cape. And I'm just doing this real quick because I just want to give you the basics. I don't want you, I don't want to show you exactly how to do every single thing here. We've got that. Um, but then maybe we want something with this costume here. Yeah, maybe he's got sort of a little a rope thing that almost like a Doctor Doom. Hopefully, he won't look too much like Doctor Doom. <laughs> A little thinner than Doctor Doom, but I guess, you know, if we wanted to put all kinds of armor on it, like, you know, we can give him some, some gauntlets here. Whatever. Uh, maybe he's got a, maybe he's got a belt. Maybe give him some Superman briefs. We can even play around with some. Maybe he's got a mask underneath here. And there's, you know, there's guides in here, so you kind of know more or less where you can place the eyes and the mouth and everything like that. Um, you know, maybe give him, maybe give him some like boots, like these. I don't know what you call these, like the pirate boots or the kind that Captain America wears. Anyway, but you can go in and you can start, you know, sketching all your designs and then you can do the same thing with the, the back view. Of course, that's going to be mostly covered by that. But then even like so, if it's if it's capes blowing away, maybe you do see some of the back. So you can also go in and you can kind of, for whatever reason, if he doesn't have his cape on, you can show what he looks like underneath or whatever. Same thing with the side view. Anyway, so that that'll kind of give you uh, just a, something to start off with. It's 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 easier if you don't have to worry about sketching the character. You can just kind of go on here, and you can always flesh these guys out more if you want them to be more muscular. You know, you can definitely you know do that. Give them a little more muscles. Whatever the case, but yeah. So again, there's a male and female character design template included. So our characters are designed, but now we've got to give them a voice. So luckily I've included some, some assets that you can use for that. I've got word balloons, fonts, sound effects. Uh, so let's dig into that. I'm using, now I'm in Adobe Illustrator. I tend to like to do all my lettering and everything in Illustrator. Now, a lot of you guys may not use Illustrator, but there are PNGs and other, you know, other formats that you can use, like the word balloons and everything. And of course, the fonts are universal. Um, doesn't matter what programs you use, they'll work in whatever program. Uh, so let's see, we're going to go to the kit and I am going to go to balloons and captions. So I am using Adobe Illustrator CC. Um, so let me let me open up some word balloons. You can see here's here's a file here. There's some different word balloons and balloon tails. Uh, let me open up another one. Uh, I'm going to use that illustration that I was working on with the robot. So I'm going to 
I'm gonna, here, let me show you this. So there's like, you know, if you want somebody who's whispering, we've got sort of the dotted lines. If you want maybe more of a monster talking, the balloons that are a little, you know, messed up, even like, you know, if you got somebody like the thing or something. Uh, but these ones in particular, they kind of give a vibe of like a sort of like something a robot might might be coming up out of a robot's mouth or, or voice emulator or whatever you want to call it. Um, so I'm going to grab one of these and I am also going to grab this balloon tail. And I just like to work on a separate sheet here so I'm going to paste these in here. And what you do is, so I'm just going to line this up kind of where I want it. And then I'm going to go to my Pathfinder tool. I'm going to select both of these. I'm going to open this up and then I'm going to go to make compound shape. There we go. <laughs> All right, and that will just merge them. And you can also go back in here. Oh, let me select them again. If you want to release that. Another way to do it is if you just select that and if you know you're not gonna make any changes, you can just go ahead and click this button here which will unite the shapes in Pathfinder. And unfortunately, you can't break those up afterwards, but you can undo them, so I'm going to Control Z that, and then I'm going to go back to make compound shape. So now I've got my word balloon here, but I want something, I want my hero to be saying something too. So I'm going to pick just a kind of a more standard word balloon, and we're going to uh, pick a tail here. Put that, let's go back to this thing here. And you can rotate these if you like, whatever, you know, obviously you want them to point to the character's mouth. Um, you can reverse them a little bit, like I just did there. I'm gonna go ahead and make that a compound shape there. All right, now, of course, we've got our word balloons, but we need, we need something to put in there. And I have included some comic book fonts. So what, what do we want this guy to say? Here, let me go back. Let me change, let me go here to bullpen banter. Okay, so that this is a font that is included, bullpen banter, both the standard version and the bold version. So let me just type what I want this guy to say. Um, taste my fist, robot. All right, so I'm gonna uh, we're gonna, that's way too much spacing here, so I'm gonna go ahead and get a little less spacing in there. And there we go. And maybe, you know, maybe I want fist to be bold for emphasis. All right, and then I've got, let's, let's make the, I want to make all these the same size. You usually want your type to be mostly the same size. Um, so what's the robot going to be saying? Um, systems failing. Oh, here's another thing. You don't want the crossbar eyes. So there is, there's capital and lowercase versions. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change that to the lowercase. I mean, it isn't lowercase. It's all usually with, with, uh, with comic book fonts, typically they're all in caps, but like we'll do that here too. We'll make that because the, usually the only time we want to use a crossbar I is if the word I or I'm or you know. So anyway, so we got systems failing, and you can kind of alternate them too because they some of the fonts are a little letters are a little bit different. How, why did that go back to the way it was? Did I forget about that? Oh, there's two eyes. That's why. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. Um, now uh, let's let's I, now that I've showed you sort of the bullpen banter font, let me show you another font that's included. Um, this one. Let's see. We're gonna do. We're just gonna spell out boom, and we're gonna go to ruckus. There we go. Okay. So ruckus is more of a sound effect font. Um, so what we do, and usually when I'm doing sound effects. Let me do another couple more O's just to make it. What I do is I like to break them, break sound effects apart and kind of rearrange the letters to give them a little more, you know, 
pizzazz. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to expand those letters and that's going to convert it from a, now after I do that I won't be able to edit. But I can do some cool stuff. So if I want this O to be a little bit bigger. And again, the, the, the other cool thing is that there are capital and lowercase versions. So even though these O's all look fairly, they're, they're some, they look exactly the same except for the size. Um, the lowercase and uppercase versions of the O are slightly different. So if you're putting two O's next to each other and you're not doing all this other stuff, um, they, there will be a little, you know, bit of a variance between the two. So there, so I've got that. I'm just going to group those together so we've got a sound effect. But if you don't want to do all that, I have included some sound effects, some predetermined sound effects. So let's go here. We'll go to, we're just going to go to the sound effects. We're going to go to Adobe Illustrator CC, open those up, and let me show you what we're working with here. All right, so you see we've got all kinds of predetermined sound effects. Pretty awesome. Doing this robot, he's got a ray gun, so I'm going to pick this zap. I'm going to bring it over and paste it in here. All right. Now, a lot of times what I'll do, I don't usually do this separate. What I'll do is I, I will, I'll, I'll import my Photoshop version into Illustrator, and then I'll do my type there. So I'm doing a little bit backwards, but but what I can do now is um, I'm just going to copy these, and we're going to we're going to paste them into our little thing that we were working with, our little, little comic book page here. So there we go. Taste my fist, robot. All right. Get this one in here. System's failing. We're gonna kind of have to cover up some of this guy. That's why you want to work with the actual artwork there. Because <laughs> I I would probably do that a little bit differently. You know what? Let me. I'm gonna resize this. I think that's about the right size. Now, like I said, you want them all. You want you don't want some some types to be bigger than others. So I should have planned this out first. But make sure that looks like it's about the same size. All right, and let's go. We'll grab our little zap sound effect. This will be good, kind of. work kind of for his ray gun. Maybe even put another one in there. Maybe a little bit bigger so it's like zap zap. All right. Let's go a little bigger and then for the punch sound effect let's just get our boom. This guy's hitting him so hard it's making a boom sound effect. And there we go. All right, so now you can kind of see what you can do with type and balloon. Um, the other thing, let me show you this. We've got captions too. I probably won't use any captions for this particular example, but I do want to show you what they look like. Uh, balloons and captions, uh, caption boxes. So I'll open those up. So I've got these are pretty standard, you know you know boxes and everything we've got some that are slightly tilted some that are sort of ragged like it's a piece of torn paper uh, some with a little background behind it these ones are kind of good maybe for some technological you know if like in the future or something you want something to be futuristic um, let me open the other one here and then we got some again that are a little more a little rougher we got some that are more like banners waving banners um, but yeah, so there's all kinds of different uh, caption boxes that you can use as well. So I showed you a lot of things that you can do with the starter kit, but there's still more features I haven't touched on yet. So if we want to add some detail to our comic book illustration, uh, we can do that with some speed lines and some half tones. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up, uh, here's our half tones. All right, so we got a little halftone sheet here. Um, I'm going to select this. 
go back to our illustration here. Where is it? Okay. So what I'm going to do... Now, I'm going to add some half tones to some of these robots. So I'm going to go in here and I am just going to kind of create a selection where I want the half tones to be placed. All right. We've already we've already copied everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to let's see file. Uh, what am I looking for? Oh, uh, sorry. Edit uh, paste special and paste into. Now we've got some half tones in there. Those are a little big. So what we're going to do is we're going to scale those down. So I want to make them a little smaller. There, that looks better. So there, as you can see. Uh, we've added some half tones to our illustration. We can keep repeating that depending on kind of what look we want. But there's all kinds of other other there's there's radiant half tones. There's different percentages and everything you can pick from. Um, and we also have some speed lines. So what we're going to do is we're going to open. Uh, is, do I have that open already? Yeah. Here we go. So here is a speed burst. I am going to copy that. We're going to go. Here we go. And I'm just going to paste that in there. Let's zoom it out a little bit. And I'm kind of adjust that a little bit. I'm going to move up so the center is kind of more or less kind of right where the punch is, or close proximity to where the punch is going to hit. Do that. And then we want to get rid of, we can just kind of get rid of our excess. Now, the other thing I want to tell you guys is it wouldn't be a bad idea to create a whole separate file of everything in the starter kit. So if you accidentally write over it or erase it, you've got a backup because sometimes we can do that because we're making a lot of changes and everything. But there you go. You can see we've added some speed lines and everything. Um, let's, let's go ahead. And so again, these are some of the different, um, half tones there are all right so and speed burst so there's different speed bursts like here's here's a pretty cool one you know what else we got we want to show some just some motion lines and you can rotate these or whatever some some of those type of speed lines um, some cool kind of radial speed lines but yeah, so there's there's all kinds of different files um, in this starter kit. Like I said, it's just packed with stuff. So, I mean, just open it up and play with it, and and just you know test it out and see all the different stuff you can do because it's it's I mean it's really it's really a great way to kind of get you started and and kind of add some different effects and everything to your work and give you some new fonts to work with. And the best thing of all is that it's free. So there you go. That is your tour of the Comic Maker Starter Kit. If you want to get it, it is free. Just go to CircWorks.com. There is a link in the description of this video. Just click on that link and you can go and download the kit and just open it up and start making some awesome stuff with it. I've already seen just really amazing artwork that you guys are producing using bits and pieces and different elements of the kit. And I love to see more. So uh, you can share those with me. I'm at CircWorks on social media. Let me know in the YouTube, on Facebook, wherever you want to do. I'm pretty much works everywhere and I want to see what you guys are building with that kit so yeah go check it out and uh, just start creating and I will see you guys later that is all hey thanks for watching if you like what you saw and you want to see more hit that subscribe button also you can follow me at Silkworks on social media do you like making comics then go to silkworks.com and pick up the comic maker starter kit it's packed full of fonts brushes templates and more and best of all it's totally free